Right, so we've got a rough layout with this board. Let's um, put you on the hyperlapse, see it all coming together. I'm going to get on with trying to tidy this away into something that makes sense, and then I am going to let Nathan loose in wiring it all up. So yeah, I'm just going to get it all attached to the board and measured out nice and neat. Um, paint's just about dry, still a little bit tacky, so I'm kind of jumping the gun ever so slightly, but um, patience is not one of my strong points. So I'm going to get on with this. I'll pop you on the hyperlapse, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you up with you in a bit. Okay, so we've got roughly everything fixed onto the board now where I want it. A um, few little issues with the paint not being quite dry and me forgetting that I had my little table underneath here so I screwed straight through to that in places, but never mind. Um, we're there now and you'll see here we've got a, this is going to be for a socket ring and we're going to have a USB socket on it as well so we can put a bit of resistance through these cables. Next to it we've got a little cooker circuit and again a little bit of resistance through the cables that I'll show you when we come to do the wire up. Then down here we've got the 420 amp isolators where we're going to loop a light, light in feed through and then out to four different lights with different attachments on those lights. So we'll have a, a GU10, a BC, an E27 and a normal LED lamp. We've got a little earth block here and a, a phantom a bit of pipe work that we can bond to. This is going to be where we bring the supply in so it's just going to be on a plug top into this isolator switch. So the whole board can be locked off and turned off. So I don't know if they've got it set up at a, an event or something. You can lock it off on an evening if they haven't got access to the plug top. Um, let me leave it nice and safe. We're going to run up here and then we've got a, a, a supply head that's yet to arrive uh, into the supply head. Then out of the supply head entails to this meter and then looped across into the, um, the uh, yeah, board. Lost my words there because I've got text messages popping up on the screen from my lads who were having a few problems out on site, so I'll have to go and I'll reply to them in a sec. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, obviously, the lighting cabling we're going to run on the back, and the reason for that is we want to add some uh, resistance to the circuit, and I'll show you how we're going to do that. So the back of this board is going to be battened off, and we're going to have a, a false panel on the back there as well, cover all the ends of these screws up that have poked through to the other side of the 18mm ply, um, and we'll pop some P-clips on there. So I'll show you it all on the other side once we've got it wired up nice and tidy. And then we've got a cover to go on there with the, the hooks to hang it onto the wall. And um, we'll take you through it all. But the, the ultimate idea is that the manufacturer can test their instruments with a sales rep and teach them how they use them. So we've got clamps that can go on the tails, for example. We've got the, the, the earth system here where they can lock onto the earth as well and uh, measure for, for ZE if they like, for example. Um, we've got the, the ring final circuit so they can do measurements end to end and your crossover tests. We've got the radial on the cooker circuit and then the light fittings where they can plug the light mate adapters in and get test readings from and um, show how having connected loads into the circuit and you can work around that on your insulation resistance test. A USB socket so that they can do some USB testing as well. Um, yeah, it's just to try and cover as much as they possibly can. This down here is what we're possibly thinking we're going to run down in some NYY from the board into this and it's maybe for them to plug an EV charge point into 
Um, obviously it wouldn't be able to run at anything like its full load and charge your vehicle up because it's just going to be on a plug top. But if they need to power it up on an event and then maybe run through the test sequence um, on the, the, the EV uh, product with the, their EV adapter, then they maybe could. Obviously they wouldn't be able to run through the full range of simulation on it um, for connected loads and such, but they'll be able to do a bulk of the test process, I would imagine. So that might be an option, but otherwise it's just going to be an IP44 uh, Blue Commando outlet. And again, they can demonstrate some testing on that if they wish to. Uh, it's just something we've dropped on there because we thought it might be nice. Um, plenty of space on the board to put a few logos on, so they might want to put the, the branding on here or up there or something. And um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So said we've got cable going on the surface so people can take it apart and get access to it and perhaps reroute it. I don't know, that's that's why we've gone for a bit of conduit on the top. And then we're going to wire around the back, and that's because we want to introduce some resistance to the circuits on these lighting cables, for example. And that needs to be on the reverse side. Uh, and again, we'll show you that as we do it. Um, it, it just involves putting a, a thin sheet of ply across the back to cover everything over. Um, all the cable is going to be double insulated. It's not to con uh, create any kind of containment. It's just to cover up the, the screws and the mess. And when people hang it on the wall, they're not going to be crushing the cables, for example. So it's just to leave it nice and safe. But I'll show you that later on in the video. Hope you've enjoyed it so far. I'll pop you on the time lapse when Nathan's wiring all this up. Obviously, we've got the supply head still to fit. And we've got to cut a hole out for the, um, for the LED downlight but I don't want to do it right now because the paint's still a little bit tacky and we'll just end up with dust everywhere. I've already put my fingerprints in here and there by having too much haste and not enough patience. So yeah we'll pop back onto a hyperlapse next I think of showing Nathan getting to work um, and um, hopefully not screwing things to the table like I did.
And there she just about blows. That's kind of um, it to a point, minus the labelling and um, final marking up of everything. So I'll just take you through kind of what we've got all the way along this. Um, so we've got the, the plug top here that, that powers it all up. This comes into this rotary isolator. So the reasoning for that was if this goes out to a trade show or something, it can be locked off and the plug top doesn't need to be interfered with. We've then kind of created this, I don't know, fake service head where we have the, it's an MYY cable coming in here. It just breaks out through this into the head. It was a way of keeping it all enclosed. The earth drops out the side. Obviously this can't be made into a specific earthing arrangement because we're just coming off a plug top, but you know, it's out there external. If somebody wants to put a clamp meter on it and take a measurement or get some values off this earth bar, then they can. Uh, likewise, we come up into the meter. These tails have been purposely made a bit long and left loose, and that's so that clamp meters can be put around them. So this is the TIS clamp attachment that goes on the MFT Pro. Um, we've also got a little clamp meter just around the tails and the earth there as well. You know, I just thought that was a nice thing to be able to do on the test board. We've got the crab tree board. This still needs labeling up, and I need to get some more blanks in. You see we've got RCBOs there. We've basically got the um, EV charge point a cooker circuit, a ring final circuit and lighting circuit and again we've gone for the breaker values that you would typically use on a job but obviously we're off the 13 amp plug top so you know you're not going to get that kind of load out of this board it was just to try and make it as real as possible uh, we then drop down into this commando plug and again you can put a test adapter in there and just get some normal measurements uh, but the thinking is that they might want to power possibly an EV charge point off that just to demonstrate at a trade show um, so obviously it's not going to end up charging a vehicle because again plug top but yeah we come down through this socket ring here so you can get different measurements of resistance on your r1 r2s you can do some ir testing um, you can take your loop impedance measurements and your rcd trip testing so i'm showing here with the tis plug um, in there and then just the voltage indicators into there as well this is all dead at the minute we've then got the tis polarity checker so you can use that on the cooker circuit if you like uh, there's all the light mate adapters. I'm still waiting for the, the B15 adapter to come for this. I don't have that to plug in at the moment. It's going to be here before that's it, before it gets um, shipped off. So I don't know if I've mentioned already, but this is for TIS. They're going to use it in their training room. So it's to try and get as much of their products that can work on this board as possible. So we've got the lighting circuit and all the cables for this are on the back. So we've used varying cable types in this. We've got singles, NYY, twin and earth. Um, it was just to try and give an installer or somebody who's in sales and might be looking at the way the products work a bit of experience and insight of all the different types of cabling and such that you might come across. We've then got the 20 amp isolators. So the lighting circuit basically loops through all of these but then feeds off into the lamps themselves individually. So you can test these um, one at a time or you can do them as a whole circuit depending on what you want to do and again you can use the light mates to um, get a value of your R1, R2s or your ZSs and I've demonstrated this on some of my other videos as well where you can do that safely without having to uh, be in contact with any live parts obviously you can have this in place and then you just need to clip onto the earth um, and step back and do your work and again you can do that through the process of locking on and off each time to ensure you're safe so the argument of live testing doesn't wash with me you can do most of it very safely it's just um, a lack of convenience that stops people from doing it and that's no real excuse up here we've got a little whiteboard that's still just um drying on there so i'm not going to fiddle around with that too much but the thinking with that is that you can kind of be maybe taking some measurements off these circuits and you just want to make a quick note of what value you've recorded or a certain sequence of tests you need to be um, recording you know i thought it'd be a nice little feature to have on there a little space at the bottom for them to put some branding on if they wish. Um, yeah, and that's kind of it. I need to get it all back onto the workbench now. I'm going to give it a final coat of the red paint because we've scuffed it up a bit in trying to get some of these accessories on. So it needs a little bit of a tidy up. And then we're going to give it another coat of lacquer on top just to try and seal everything and make it as robust as possible. Um, on the back, we've just got a bit of flex cable running between some of this bits and bobs over on that side. Everything else is on the front. Um, yeah, so I thought that covers a nice little bit of a test board really you can have a uh, a good probe around on there and mess about with varying different bits of equipment uh, all quite safely and again you know it's it's imperative that you have that safety on boards like this when it's perhaps sales reps who are going to be looking at products who maybe aren't electricians 
So you're factoring that into the design itself, um, trying to make it as safe and user friendly as possible. And then again, if this goes out to a trade show, it wants to look half decent as well. And I think we've come up with a reasonable job, but let me know in the comments what you think, if you'd have done anything a bit different, uh, anything else you might like to see included on a board like this. And uh, let me know. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you all on the next video. So this is sort of it now. We've got the, the board all labelled up. So we've got the main uh, test board isolator here and you'll see it switched on now. It just goes off to a plug top. Come through the service head, which we've labelled up and the meter. Still need to get the right blanks in this board, but we've got a, a test date on there and all the required labels. You can see we've labelled up the, the spare ways and what each individual ICVO does. Um, get those blanks in soon. And you can see... We've got the socket circuit on, the light test points here, you'll see we've got these various adapters as I discussed before to fit the different lamps that might want to be put in and as I said with the TIS kit they have the light mate stuff that I think they want to use in these and, and demo. You can see here we've got, we've got some power on now for these and they all sort of individually switch so you can take test measurements off each one, they'll be slightly different due to the length of cable we've got on the back. A um, little magnetic whiteboard just at the top there for anyone who wants to record some results down, for example. Um, we've got a little cooker circuit down here as well. And again, we've uh, adjusted the conductor sizes so we can get some varying measurements of resistance. And as I've said before, this we're thinking possibly to connect an EV um, charge point into just to demonstrate maybe in the training room or at a trade show or whatever. Um, obviously, it wouldn't be able to be used as a proper EV charge point, but it's a safe way of connecting it, or even just connecting some other accessories and test leads into this uh, commando socket. And this is an interlocked one, so it's quite safe, um, you know, when it's not not in use. And that's sort of it, really. So we've got the Crabtree board, um, little earthing system here that we've set up so you can put a clamp meter on it, for example. We've got the service head on and some quite long tails. As I said, that's deliberate so that it can be clamped around and then different wiring methods and uh, safe and sound. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Any comments, drop them in below and I will catch you all on the next one.